All right, so we'll continue. We can solve the rational inequality by graphing it as well. To do that, I do have to bring the 2 to the left side and make it into one fraction. So I'm really going to solve this one. That means that I need a common denominator. So I'm going to use x plus 2 over x plus 2. <clears throat> and then create one fraction out of this. So we know we get x plus 2 over here. So this is x minus 2x, that's a negative x, and a negative 4, and a negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4, so a negative 4 minus 4 is a negative 8. And then that's the rational function that I'm going to graph, and I'm going to see when is it above the x-axis. So let's start with a horizontal asymptote. That would be when x plus 2 is equal to 0, so x is a negative 2. Vertical asymptote. Keep in mind there's a 1 here and a 1 there, so y equals a negative 1. Um, intercepts, uh, when x is 0, you end up with a negative 8 over 2, which is a negative 4. And y is 0, when a negative x minus 8 is 0, let's move the x, so I get x is a negative 8. So that gives you a dot at a negative 8, 0, and this one gives me a dot at 0, negative 4. I might have to do a little more work, but we'll see where we are. Uh, we'll just graph what we have. So, what do we know? Um, negative 2 for... Oh, I just realized something over here. I sometimes mess these up. Let's make this my vertical asymptote, and that your horizontal asymptote. <coughs> Okay, so the vertical asymptote set a negative 2. The horizontal asymptote is at a negative 1. Yeah, it's a little too high. We have a 0 at a negative 8, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8. We have 0 to negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So on this side, I feel pretty confident that I have something like this happening. And it's approaching over here. And then on this side, it, so this is my guess, but I need to make sure that it's going the right way. I don't see how else it could be, but just for my own I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug in a negative 3 and see what happens. So when I plug in a negative 3, I get a negative 3 minus 8. Well, actually I get a positive 3 because a negative and negative makes positive. And then divide that by a negative 3 plus 2. So that's a negative 5 divided by a negative 1, so it's at 5. So that would be up here somewhere. So that makes me feel a little better. So, so there. So this is a rough sketch of the graph. And based on that, I can answer the question whether or not it's above or equal to 0. So above or equal to 0. So it's equal here. So that would be at x is a negative 8. And then it's <clears throat> above the x-axis from there on. So I know starting at a negative 8 up to 2, it's above. So that's part of the solution. And then anything else? Uh, here it's always below. So that's it. This is the only spot where this rational function works. Okay, so if you were to graph that on a number line, you would start with a dot at a negative 8. That one would be closed in because it's set greater than or equal to. And then at 2, you would get an open circle because keep in mind that, or sorry, the negative 2. At a negative 2, I would get an open circle because keep in mind that's because it's an asymptote. So you can't use it, but you know any number just to the left of a negative 2 would be above the x-axis. So that, that's doing it by graphing. So not too bad, but keep in mind that this was a fairly straightforward rational function. Okay? Um, if you do this algebraically, it sort of works the same way. Um, you need to find the zeros and the undefined values, so keep in mind that the undefined values, those would be your vertical asymptotes. 
and your holes. Okay, and those all end up on the number line, and then you do you you do test points. Um, open circles, these are always open. Okay, both of these are always open. Zeros, it depends. If it's a greater than or equal to, or if it's a less than or equal to, then you will have closed circles. But um, you know, you can have both there. Okay. So it would have started exactly the same way. You would have brought this over here first. You'd have made a common denominator. You'd have ended up with this one. And then you would have just looked for zeros. So we're actually only interested in the x-intercept. And we would have to look for problems with the domain. So based on the domain, we would say x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 2. And then those would be the two locations on my number line. So negative 8 and then negative 2. OK, and then you have to think about it. So greater than or equal to 0, that means 0 is OK. So this one would be closed. Domain problems always have an open circle, and now you test. Okay, so, for example, an easy spot to test would be at zero. So what happens at zero? So if I'm testing and x is zero, I get a negative eight divided by um, two, and that's supposed to be greater than or equal to zero, and that's not true. So no solutions in this region. And then pick a number over here, so maybe a negative three. So when you test at a negative three, you get a negative negative 3, so that would be 3 minus 8 divided by a negative 3 plus 2. So that would be a negative 5 divided by a negative 1. And that is greater than or equal to 0, so we get our pluses here. So we can make this connect. And then you check over here. And so you can check with negative 9, negative 10. What I often do then is just pick a very, very large negative number. Okay, like if I use like a negative 100 and then if I plug that in I get 100 minus 8 so that's a plus over here and a negative 100 plus 2 that's a negative and so in a positive divided by negative is not greater than equal to 0 so then I sort of go back often to the whole idea of well I just want to see if it's above or below you know or is it greater than or is it less than 0 so the numerical value isn't that important it's just dealing with negatives and positives okay well, then here you got all the steps for solving polynomial and rational inequalities algebraically. So notice that it, it says, make them say zero first. Okay, then determine where it equals zero. And if it's a rational function, you also need to worry about indefined values. Put your numbers that you found over here, so the zeros and the undefined values, and put them on the number line. So that's when you make your little graphs like this. And then in each interval, test. And that will be it. Okay, thanks.